Okay, so hello everyone. This is Lakshya here, and let us resume with the today's question of our GFG Pure Streak. Today's question is again a very standard and easy question, but many of you have started your journey. Um, maybe you are a beginner, so let us wrap this question as quickly as we can. We have been given a matrix of n cross n. We need to print the elements of the matrix in the snake uh, pattern depicted below. So what is the snake pat pattern here? So snake का मारा कैसे चलता है? Zigzag चलता है. Snake moves in a zigzag manner. So we need to print our elements in the zigzag manner. So let us say you have the elements a, b, c, d, e, f, and g, h, i. So first we need to print the first row from left to right, and then the second row from right to left, and subsequently till our row ends, right? So let us write again. It's a math trial question. So first we need to write what we need, right? And then we need to apply that logic in terms of variables. Okay, so that's the row. So first of all, we know that we need to iterate for each and every row. So I need to iterate for each and every row. That is zero, one, and two. Now, for the first row, there's a zeroth row. I need to travel from left to right. That means I need to cover the indexes zero to two uh, in the sequence. And then for the next subsequent row, I need to cover all the elements, but the sequence. The sequence is from two to zero, right? And similarly, it's again zero to two and two to zero, and sim uh, and so on and so forth for rest of the rows. Now. This row, this first, this first need I can do this using a for loop, right? So I can just write for i equals to zero, i less than n, i plus plus, right? So I know this is my i index. Now can I comment? So to access an element, you need i and j both, right? The row index and the column index. So your j is performing like this, zero to two. So can you express this zero to in terms of i? Yes, I can say that i starts from zero, right? So I can clearly see that the j. Or even before, you can notice that if if it is the even value, if i is even value, then you are going from left to right, right? So there will be definitely two cases that if i is even, and then if i is odd, right? Then you will have your j value going from for even values, you are going from zero to two, right? That is the last index. So for even values, you will be going from. Let me use a different color. You will be going from inclusive index from zero to exclusive n. And for here, you will go from uh, n minus one to zero till zero, right? So you'll ha you'll have your for loop for j equals to zero till j less than n and j plus plus. You need to print your matrix of i and j. I hope that's visible to you guys, right? So in the odd case again, you will have a for loop that will be going from j equals to n minus one till j greater than equals to zero and j minus minus again print d. Matrix of i and j. So instead, instead of printing, you need to add all the elements in an array list in Java and vector in C++. Please pause this video here now and try to code this of course by yourself so that we can quickly shift to the C++ and shall end this video. Great, yeah. So that's the pseudo. That's the code in Java actually. So we have the n and m variables storing the uh, number of rows and the number of columns, and we have an array list because the return type given in the Java is array list. So we have a for loop that is very iterating for each and every row. Now we have already discussed that there would be two cases that if the row index is even, then definitely you have to move from left to right, right? So you need to go from j equals to zero to j less than m. You can write less than m or less than n because it's a square matrix, three cross three. So n and n and m would be same. So I think we can just omit this part here. I can just say n, and I can do this part as n. And this part as an else. So now we have else case, the odd case, and we need to iterate from the right hand side to left hand side, and subsequently for each and every element, we need to add it in our array list, and that's it. We need to return the AL. So what is the time and space complexity? <laughs> Clearly, we are using a nested for loop, right? At line number forty-six and line number fifty, so it would be two parallel for loops, right? Inside a for loop from i zero to n. So clearly, it would be n square, right? And what is the space complexity? The return type is an array list, which it, which is actually returning all the elements present in the square matrix. So all the elements are n cross n again. So that is why time and space both would be n cross n. And let us see the constraints. Since those, this code has got some method, then definitely n cross n should be less than 10 power 8. And you can see n is 10 power 3. If you square it, it will be 10 power 6, which is less than 10 power 8. And that is why our code got some method. Great, yeah. Let us switch back to the C++ code. Okay, that's a C. So the same thing we have instead of array list, we have a vector. And instead of dot add function, we have a pushback, and that's it. Just return the result. Let us wait for the summation. 
great so i have not scored marks for this question let me see okay so i solved this question in 2020 let us see what solution i have written that time okay so this is not a dry code i have repeated myself several times as you can see we have oh no that's what have i done here let me see okay so i think at that time we do not need to just complete the function instead you have to write the whole code so that's why i've taken the parameters okay okay but still i have used one for loop right great nested for loop once that's great that's great okay let us end this video here till then keep learning keep going bye bye and take care guys let us meet in tomorrow's purity streak till then take care and keep learning